Amen. All right. You may take your seats. Amen. We have 15 minutes more. And we are finished with day number 12. We are going into day number 13. Say amen to that. All right. And tomorrow is day number 13. And remember that from Thursday, we are having breaking the limits. We are doing the last seven days together. So Thursday to Wednesday. Don't stay out. Seven days. Hallelujah. All right. So let's look at what we are doing tomorrow and close quickly. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 10, chapter 2, verse 10 to 11. Tomorrow we are dealing with the devices of the enemy. Say amen to that. Yeah, so tomorrow we are dealing with the devices of the enemy. You know, in every church and in every community, one of the useful people we need is a whistleblower. Someone who can report nonsense and rubbish that goes on at the blind side of the leader. And in the church of Corinth, one day a whistleblower went to the apostle and said, there is a brother in the church who is sleeping with his father's wife. And apostle Paul got angry and told him as communicating, get him out of the church. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, Apostle Paul began teaching the church in another dimension. And he's telling the church that the brother you sacked from the church, go and look for him and bring him back and forgive him. For whosoever you will forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgive, I forgive anything to whom I forgive it. For your sakes, I forgive it in the person of Christ. What Apostle Paul is saying is that if I have overlooked the wickedness that people have perpetrated towards me, I've done it because of your sake. And if you also forgive anyone, I also forgive the person. And why is he telling them to forgive? Go on. He said, if we don't learn to forgive one another, Satan will have an advantage of us. We are not ignorant of his devices. It means that Satan has devices. And it means that Satan uses his devices. You read it God. He said we are not ignorant of the devices of the devil. Of the devices of the opposer. We are not ignorant and if we don't learn to forgive, he will have an advantage. If you have read my book on prayer and my book on fasting, you will know that one of the things I teach in both books is forgiveness. Because without forgiveness, all this fasting and prayer we are doing is useless. Amen. So tomorrow we are going to deal with 10 devices of the enemy. 10. We are going to deal with offenses and bitterness. Anytime anybody begin to do anything that could get you to be offended, remember the devil has boarded a bus coming to your life. Anytime, anybody. And please, the 
the people around you are smart in the doing of evil. So most of them are masters in causing offense and bitterness. But you be careful not to be offended or to be bitter. Am I preaching to you? Be very careful and tell yourself anytime anybody does anything that can make you offended, say, I am not ignorant of the devices of the devil. Don't pick offense. If you don't like what the person did, tell them your mind. Tell them, if you don't like it, tell them your mind. Jesus said, if somebody has done something against you, you don't like, go to the person and say, I don't like what you did. Tell the person your mind. If the person admits his wrong, forgive. Do whatever it takes not to be offended or bitter at people. It is a device of the devil. Amen. Amen. I can't hear your amen. So tomorrow you are going to deal with offenses and bitterness in your own life. The second thing we are going to deal with tomorrow are hex and curses. Hex. Driabo. Any no mean. These are two things we are going to deal with. Hexes and cases. It's a device. When somebody curses you, it is the devil's device against your life. When somebody places a hex on you, it's the devil's device. Don't allow it to work. Say amen to that. So tomorrow... We are going to lift up the weapons of war against any hex or curse in the life of any member of this church who will be fasting tomorrow. We'll lift a prayer. We are going to break curses and deal with hexes. Say amen to that. Number three. Tomorrow. We are going to deal with spells and charms. Spells and charms. They are the devil's weapons. Sometimes you are living your life, but literally there is a puppet master somewhere. Amen. You don't go to the rooms of people. But sometimes in people's wardrobes, they have a graven image of you tied. And when they wake up in the morning, they bring out that graven image and command you by speaking to that toy. They cast a spell on you so you can think. And one of the signs that there is a curse operating in your life or there is a spell that has been placed on you, is when you cannot heed advice. When you become so wise in your own eyes that nothing anybody says seems to have any wisdom for you except what you are saying. Check it. There is a curse operating in your life. Anytime people are cursed, they cannot heed advice and they cannot take counsel but tomorrow we are going to break the power of spells and charms are you getting the point sometimes someone has charmed you and sometimes charm is not charm is not always about to be a beauty can be charming intelligence can even be charming are you getting the point? Just like even right now. You see, this is day number 13. And I'm just writing prayer topics. 
when you are praying, you pray for five minutes, your words are finished. And in a day, I'm able to write ten prayer topics for you to pray. Sometimes, such a display of grace can be very charming and attractive. And instead of people getting born again, they rather fall in love with the wisdom that has been displayed. But I have an announcement for you. Nobody is anything. I am not anything. The real thing is the anointing. The thing that makes the difference in everybody's life. So if you catch what is on my life, and you may not like me, but there is something on my life which God gave me. You are not the one who gave it to me. You can't take it away from me. And nobody can take God gave it to me. It's mine. Are you getting the point? It is on my life until you catch it. You never look like me. So, sometimes when we are talking, that's why we say spell. A spell, that one is more demonic. But a charm may not necessarily be demonic. A charm, even smartness, can be charming. One day, I saw a video of a guy dancing. And when I saw the way the guy was dancing, I immediately felt like I should have learned dancing in school. It is a kind of a charm. Are you following what I'm preaching? So tomorrow you're going to pray and say that whatever thing that I have been charmed with, that I can't think straight anymore by the blood, by fire, by thunder, I break it. You're going to free yourself. Lift up your right hand and say amen to that. So sometimes it is a spell or a charm. You're going to break it. Number four, we are going to deal with lies and disguise. Masquerades. That come to be. Disguise. There was a time when a group of people called Gibeonites. They were actually people Israel was not supposed to enter into a league with. They disguised themselves as travelers from a far country. And they came and they showed bread. And Joshua entered into a covenant with them. Some of us have entered into covenants with people in disguise. We have entered into covenants with people with masquerades. We have entered into covenant with people who have taken refuge under lies. So sometimes they come to you, you tell them your heart, thinking they are with you. But right from there, they are going to betray you. These are people who have disguised themselves. Sometimes as friends, when they are really enemies. The Lord by light shall expose masquerades and disguise and lies around you in the coming days in the name of Jesus. You won't trust the wrong stuff anymore. And these are prayers. I'm going to be praying for you tonight. Whilst you sleep, I pray for you. Glory to God. I will speak these words over you. And if you wake up tomorrow, you fast, you key into it. Say amen to that. So tomorrow we are going to deal with lies, with disguise and masquerade. Then the next one, fear. Fear is a device of the devil. Sometimes when you have bad dreams, it's the devil's disguise. Those dreams are supposed to incite fear. Sometimes, people's attitude in the church is the work of the devil. Are you getting the point? Yeah. One day, Ken Saul was supposed to go to war. And Samuel delayed in coming. Then the people began to leave. They started leaving the church. They started leaving the church. And he asked everybody, why have you left the church? Oh, the pastor has done this. The pastor has done that. No, no, it's not true. It's not true, but we are pastors. So we don't say what we know. Glory to God. Yeah. One day, 
I called someone to my office and I told the person, I said, you have done this and that and that and I'm supposed to fire you but I don't want to fire you. So go and write a letter of resignation and bring it to me. Resign your job and go. I told the person, I said, I'm not going to fire you. Resign your job. You know the reason why? Because if I fire you and you're going to look for another job and you enter my name as your reference and they call me and ask me, I say, oh, he's a bad man. I sacked him. But if you resign and they call me, I'll say, oh, he resigned his job for this and that and that reason. Then after so many years, I was talking to someone and I realized that I forgot that I advised the person to resign. So my, my mouth slipped. My mouth slipped and I said something. I, said, oh, I thought all along that he lived on his own. I said, no, no, no. He didn't live on his own. He didn't live on his own. But I didn't want to spoil his record because he was a young man. And he would look for another job. I didn't want to spoil his record. I'm a righteous man. So I just advised him, resign and go. Am I preaching to you? Yeah. Fear is one of the weapons of the devil. So when people begin to do things to make you afraid and anxious, watch it. The devil is using them. Because you are not supposed to operate under fear. Amen. You are supposed to operate in love. Not in fear. So don't let anybody use a fear as a tool against you. Don't be afraid anymore. Operate in love. If you don't love anymore, make it very clear. I don't love anymore. And walk away quietly. Don't let anybody... Use fear as a to be bold. Say, I don't love anymore. And it's possible not to love anymore. Especially when the love was not genuine even at first. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So you just say, I don't love anymore. Then you walk away quietly. But don't allow anyone to use fear. And you yourself don't use fear. Number six. The thing you're going to pray about is seduction and entrapment. Seduction and entrapment. One day, somebody came to my office and the person was behaving in a particular way. I look at the person and I said in my head, you have been sent, but you are going to be the next prey. I'll use lunch. You know why? The person had brought in a device called entrapment. Unfortunately, I had a device called charm. Is it good preaching? I have a device called charm. I just said that. So I told the person, I said, oh, don't trust me too much. My smile can be captivating, but don't let my face deceive you. I just told the person, I scared the person, I said, don't let my face deceive you. I have a dark mind. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Am I preaching to you? Yes, it's a spiritual war. On Thursday, I'm going to be preaching. And I'll be preaching about breaking limits. So seduction and entrapment, sometimes they will trap you. I'm going to do this to provoke him. It's an entrapment and it's the devil's device. And sometimes you don't even know the devil is using you. Peter went to advise Jesus and say, you won't die. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Who told you Peter knew that the devil was using him? Peter didn't know the devil was using him. So sometimes an idea occurs to you. I'm going to do this. So that when she does that, no, no, no. It's an entrapment. Is it good preaching? Seduction and entrapment. You could be cursed. When Rebecca told Esau, Jacob, go and deceive your father. He said, what if my father finds out and curses me? So if you decide to entrap someone, the person could curse you. Hallelujah. Yeah. A 
And please don't joke with some of these things. And you know how curses operate. Usually when they are spoken against you, it doesn't take effect immediately. So even when it starts working, but you won't remember it's the case that is working. Be very careful. Say amen to that. The number seven device of the devil we are going to deal with tomorrow is accusations and misrepresentations. Accusations and misrepresentations. One day, Somebody came to me and said, so and so a person wants me to do this. I said, oh, don't do it. It's a very bad thing. And the person didn't do it. And immediately the person left. I went and I did it. Because when the person told me, I realized it was a good idea. I realized it was a very good idea. The most dangerous person is the person that tells you that this lady is a wicked lady. Then you stay away only to realize that the person has become a very close friend to the same person. He said, but then you wonder, ah, I thought you told me the lady is wicked. So how come you have been able to be close friends with this wicked woman and you are happy staying on wickedness? Does it make sense to you? It doesn't make sense to me at all that you can really see a very wicked person and you want to be close friends with a wicked person. Hey! And one day, somebody described me as a wicked person. And I was shocked. I looked at myself, I realized that, Charlie, wickedness is not one of the things in my life. Hallelujah! <laughs> wickedness is not one of the things in my life at all. And when the person described me as wicked, I was shocked. I was shocked. So, it, there is something called misrepresentation. And sometimes, I came to you. Then I had a chat with you. And when I was leaving, I said, Sammy, can we take a selfie together? Then we took a selfie. In fact, it's a selfie. All of us are smiling. But when you go and show the same photo to someone, it will take you to tell the person that, oh, we just had a chat. And in fact, I was the one who even requested that we should take a selfie together. And we took it. But I can take that same photo and say, look at Sammy. He wants to come and deceive me. And look at him. And it is called misrepresentation. What you are presenting is real, is factual, it is truthful, but what you are saying, the story behind the picture, is not exactly the truth. And this one has hurt our church over years. We are going to deal with it tomorrow. My fire and my thunder. Say amen to that. Accusation is a very bad thing. One day somebody wanted to do evil, and the person knew that the people sort of love their boss. So he rather said, went to the people and said, the boss has done this, he has done that, he has done that. To fool them from finding out what he was really doing. So tomorrow we are going to pray about accusation. Say amen to that. Initially, I used to get very angry when I got accused and misrepresented. Are you getting the point? Yeah. I, I, I said something. One day somebody said, eh, 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 you have done this, you have done that. I told the person, I said, no. I'm an anointed man. And there are certain things it is not very easy for me to do. It takes years to bring me to that point. So forget it. Number eight, we are going to pray against signs and miracles. Hey! How can the church pray against signs and miracles? Yes. If the miracle is from God, we can pray against it. But some of you, people are showing you signs. Are you getting the point? People are showing you signs. They behave in a way to portray a picture. Sometimes they go and borrow somebody's car. One day, when a uh, former church building, 
the place was not even concrete, it was bare floor. And one of my seniors came to visit us one day, driving a sleek metallic Mercedes Benz E class. And then he brought it to the church. And at that time, I was using a very old Volvo I borrowed from my brother in law. Charlie, he brought this slick Mercedes Benz. And when I saw it, I said, Ah, why did I even choose to be a pastor? I should have just gone to practice engineering. Not knowing he has gone to borrow the car. He has gone to borrow the car. It wasn't his car, it's a sign. People are showing you signs that are making you impatient. Amen. People are showing you signs. One day, I went somewhere, I went to buy food. I bought a bottle of Coke. I wanted post photos. I saw some people, they have ordered a table full of things. I sat there. I zoomed in on my, my phone camera. I took a photo of their food. Then I took a selfie of myself and then I posted both. So I'm coming to eat that food. And what betrayed me is that the food was so plenty that nobody can imagine that one person will go to a restaurant and order all that kind of food. So it's like someone who took a selfie of herself driving and unfortunately for her, her handbrake was lifted up. So obviously, if the car was not in motion, it's all packed. It cannot be a moving car. Is it powerful? Yeah? So you're going to pray about signs. Anybody showing me signs that can make me lose my patience and faith and humility. I refuse to see the signs. In the name of Jesus, I refuse to see it. Sometimes your friends will show you a photo of themselves and a boy smiling as if they are so happy in their relationship. But in actual fact, that relationship is at the verge of breaking. And make you feel like, Charlie, relationship, I also need a boyfriend. You don't need a boyfriend. Number nine, we are going to pray again, suit sale and divination. Some people go around doing suit sale. You are walking in Madina, they see it, they say, hey, Raha, knock it wall, hum, pa. It is suit sale. It is not prophecy. It is not prophecy. It is suit sale and divination. Tomorrow we are going to pray and we say that any suit sale who is trying to speak into my life, I rebuke them in the name of Jesus. I frustrate their tokens and I set confusion upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. Then lastly, we are going to deal with distraction and blindness. Sometimes the devil does things to distract us. You see, as we are fasting, I'm your pastor. I said, oh, I want to be praying for you and I'm your pastor. If the devil move you to do anything that would not make me able to pray, but to rather sit down and have long useless meetings. You have been used as a device by the devil to distract me. We need focus. So if the uh, gospel be, it is hidden to those who the God of this age have blinded the eye of the understanding. So sometimes you can be blinded to reality. Amen. You can be blinded to reality. But tomorrow we are going to pray and say that every distraction and blindness be removed. And anything the devil has set up to distract you, Charlie, we are going to demolish it to the roots. If you believe that, lift up your right hand and say amen to that. So tomorrow we are going to deal with what? Ten devices of the enemy. Ten. We are not ignorant. I can give you more. But we are going to deal with it. And there are eleven very powerful prayer topics for tomorrow. If you pray each one for two minutes, you pray for 20 minutes. If you pray each one for three minutes, it's 30 minutes. Four minutes is 40 minutes. Five minutes is 50 minutes. Six minutes is 60 minutes. It's one hour. So the prayer topics make it very easy to pray. Amen. God bless you. May his face shine upon you. May the Lord take you far in the name of Jesus. Even as you have come to spread it before the Lord, may the Lord visit you and deliver you. May he redeem you from the chains of darkness and from every oppression of the devil in the mighty name of Jesus. May your sins be forgiven and may wisdom settle on you. 
May every foolishness leave your mind and may wisdom return to you and may you walk in the wisdom of the almighty God in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Be on your feet. You want to share the grace and truth. Amen. Devices of the enemy. And are you growing wiser? What these explanations are supposed to do is to enlighten you. You break limits by light. You break limits by understanding. It's very important. Say amen to that. All right. Lift up your right hand to heaven. Glory to God. A color of Sunday. Manka parando shakula bazandi baruke taya. La barusha kandi barasa taya. Kalabura kande lebe zupre legenda. Lima haruka shuta paraya. Legeri akapando lebe zima. Lord, your children have come to spread the things before you. And I pray that even as we step out of this place, may you visit us like you visited Hezekiah. Redeem us from Sennacherib. Redeem us from Assyria. Let us be free. This is the day of trouble. It's the day of rebuke. It's the day of blasphemy. When the wicked have blasphemed your testimony. Oh God, show up and redeem your children in the mighty name of Jesus. Have I prayed with thanksgiving? Amen. Alright, God bless you. So tomorrow, uh, we are going to right after 12 o'clock, you can check the prayer topics may be there and we start praying together. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. We shall not die, but we would live to declare the works of the Lord forever. Amen.